Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at my favorite screenshot tool. Now, I'm kind of a screenshot power user, and so I need something that's both powerful, preferably free, preferably open source, and runs across Mac, Linux, and Windows, and I found that tool. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. First of all, I'm going to open up a web browser, and we are going to go to github.com slash ksnip slash ksnip. And by the way, the links to this will be down in the description below, along with any other links mentioned in the video. So you can just use those. So ksnip is an open source cross-platform screenshot tool. And if you come down here, you can kind of see like a quick preview of what we're going to what we're going to get on that. Uh, and if you come down here, there's a list, a long list of features. It's very customizable uh, and has a handful of extra features that most screenshot tools don't have. And those really set it apart, at least for me. So uh, down here too, we have kind of a cross matrix of the different features across all the different platforms that it supports. And if we scroll a little bit further down, we have installing binaries. And here is a link to the releases page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, the very first release here is a continuous build. That's a nightly build. It's automatically done and is a, from the latest code base. This could be, you know, buggy. Of course, it's going to also have the latest features, but let's just kind of skip that, scroll on down, and find the latest release. Uh, and right now, that's version 1.10.1. .1. And if you open up this little assets area here, you'll find all of the different installers. By the way, if you're running something like Linux Mint, you'll actually find KSNP in the application store so you don't really need to download it from here but you of course can if you want uh, we're on Windows right now so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download the KSNP application as an MSI it's gonna go ahead and download it in fact it's already done and that was in real time by the way because it's a really small program uh, and right there is the KSNP application as an installer so I'm gonna double click on that and it's gonna walk us through a very simple install process we're basically just going to next do that we're going to accept the uh, general purpose open source license here uh, here we're going to accept the default installation location and just click install and it's also a quick install that was also a real time so i'm going to go ahead and minimize this and minimize that and now we're out here at our desktop so let's go ahead and run ksnip so i'm just going to come down here in my search bar i'm going to type in uh, ksnip and there it is ksnip screenshotting tool and right there it is running now in order to take a screenshot with ksnip you can basically just click on this button and you can set the default of what this button does right now it's draw a rectangular area with your mouse however there's several other ways you can do screenshots uh, besides drawing the rectangular area well you can do that once and then the next option is to basically take a screenshot of that last rectangular area which is super helpful when you're taking multiple screenshots of some oddball part of your monitor also down here we have full screen all monitors which is super nice whenever you have a multi-monitor setup and you want to capture all the screens into one shot we also have the current screen which is the active monitor uh, and active window so whatever program is uh, is on top in uh, in microsoft windows here on, on this monitor so those are several of the different options. If you notice, they all have little hotkeys for whenever the KSNIP application is up and running right here. However, if it's minimized down here in the lower right-hand corner in your icon tray, uh, right there it is, uh, you can still uh, activate it by using global hotkeys, and you set those up in the preferences. And of course, it comes with a default set that it already comes installed. But let's go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to click uh, click this little new button here, and it should shows me my little reticle. It's also got coordinates and everything and a magnifying glass. So I can make sure that I'm starting my screenshot exactly where I want it to start and end exactly where I want it to end. And there we go. So we've taken our very first screenshot in KSNIP. Now, if you notice, it's created this screenshot in like a tab, and that's actually very important. It's one of those big features that kind of sets this program apart that I really like because oftentimes I'm taking screenshots of multiple, uh, you know, parts of a program, 
and I want to be able to kind of create a, a whole story here. And so each of my screenshots will show up as a tab. I can mark them all up individually, make sure they all kind of flow and I have a comprehensive story to explain things to users. In fact, let's go ahead and take another screenshot here real quick. Now I'll just use that new button again. And this time let's get a few icons in there just to make it a little bit different looking. And right there, and you notice it's on another tab, and of course I can just bounce between these two. Now also, do you notice they're not named or anything, and also it has an asterisk, which means they're not saved. If I go ahead and hit save, it's going to save it to wherever my default location is in preferences. And also save it using whatever name I told it. Uh, you notice, by the way, it tells me exactly where uh, it's saved to when I hover over it. And if I right click on these tabs, I can actually do fun things like open that directory so I can get right to that screenshot. Uh, I can also rename it, copy it, delete it, other things like that. Again, that's a, another super handy tool where you can actually manage these screenshots uh, while you're creating them, which is what's something I really like. Let's go over here to our first screenshot and let's go ahead and play with some of these tools over here. Now the very first item up here is the select tool or S is the shortcut and that just allows you to pick items that we're going to place on there in just a minute and uh, and like move them around, resize them, stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and throw an arrow on there. We can just uh, you know point that arrow right, right there. Again if I go back to select tool I can click on the arrow and I can move the arrow around. I could you know resize the arrow or whatever I want to do just like that. Now, besides that, we have some other tools here. We've got a pen tool, we've got a highlighter tool, we've got a text tool here, and I'll go ahead and I'll drag a little text box out and type in, uh, you know, some uh, text right there. And uh, if you notice up here, by the way, we have, uh, for whatever tool we have selected, we have all the different preferences for that tool. You know, we can change the font, we can change the, uh, the font size, make it bold, italics, underline, all those sort of things. We could change the transparency. Uh, right now, by default, if I click off of that, it's going to put a, a box up there. And uh, whoops, I'm going to undo that the box I accidentally created there. Uh, and if I didn't want that box, I could come over here, for example, and change it to like no border, no fill, and it would not create a box around my text. Uh, so you have a lot of options here on how exactly how you want each tool to work. Besides that, we have our numbers over here, and these are automatically incrementing numbers, which is super, super handy. Uh, so if you had something where the user needed to bounce around the screen several, several different locations, you say, well, yeah, first of all, you need to do something here, then you do something over there, and then you do something down here, and then the process is complete. So these auto-incrementing numbers are super handy. And also, too, we have a few different options with those, too. The next option uh, area is really uh, important for me too because oftentimes I need to uh, basically obscure parts of the screenshot that may contain sensitive information. Uh, so by default it's blur, so we can just kind of blur an area there. Or if you drop this down you can also do a pixelate and pixelate the area too. Uh, the next area down here is a box or a circle. So if I pick that, I can, you know, actually uh, draw a little box around something. And again, uh, you know, with these tools, you get to pick whether it's border no fill and the different colors and the transparency and all that stuff over there, uh, up there. Now, down here, we have a fun little feature. Uh, these are kind of like emoji icons that it's already got built in. And they're, uh, the ones that are built in are all the way through the, uh, the little cursor here. So we get the checkbox and the X and stuff like that. And, you know, if I want to add something like that, I can just go here and I could just add it just like that. However, these other items down here, the Mac and the uh, Linux and the Windows icons, are actually ones that I've added because you can load SVG images in here. Now, it has to be an SVG, uh, and I'm going to show you a website that's a great place to get, get those for this program uh, here in just a minute. Uh, but, you know, if I, uh, you know, pick a Tux here, uh, the uh, Linux uh, mascot. Uh, now I happen to know he's going to come in really big, so I'm going to I'm going to make him about 20% size, uh, and I just come down here and boop, I got a tux, right? And of course I can you know select him, move him around, resize him, whatever I need to do. So uh, you'll see this tool actually being used to make the uh, thumbnail for this video, by the way. Anyway. Uh, that is just some of the uh, basic tools, but let's take a quick look at a couple of other features which really kind of set this program apart. Uh, so let's go under Options, down to Settings, to pull this up and there's a lot of settings a lot of these you'll see in other programs uh, for instance you can automatically copy new captures to a clipboard and stuff like that uh, you know down here in the the savers you can you know whether it 
prompts uh, prompts you to save and, and stuff like that. Uh, these are the uh, capture location and this is the uh, default naming convention where it's going to put in the year, month, day, and time in there. But you can modify that as you as you like. Um, you can also uh, tell it to like minimize to the tray and stuff like that. So you can set all of these options here. Um, the image grabber also has a few uh, options. For instance, you want to capture the mouse and, and things like that, which are all fairly standard. Uh, you can also change the uh, border and stuff of the capture area. That way, if you can't see it, you know, on, on the background or something like that, you can change that. Uh, down here, something a little bit unusual. We have an uploader. Uh, it supports uh, ImageGur, FTP, and a kind of really freeform kind of script uh, where you can actually pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, but you can basically have this automatically upload these screenshots to a uh, you know website like ImageGur or you know your own system like with FTP or really anything you want with a script. It's really quite flexible. Down here is the annotator. We have a few options for that. But below that, we also have stickers, and this is where you can add those SVGs. In fact, I'll go ahead and I'll add one. I think I have some here in my downloads. Uh, right there, there's a, a danger zone one. So if you don't want users to do something, you can add this danger zone icon. And in fact, I have another one down here under my downloads, which is the uh, which is like a hand that's like making a stop sign. Uh, and you notice again, these are the SVG file format. So I'm going to click on that, and now I've got that in there too. You can also add a watermark. You put an image in here. Uh, and here's where you set the global hotkeys. Of course, you can turn off global hotkeys completely if you don't want that. Uh, but basically, you just hit clear and then you hold down a key press and it records it right in there. Super simple to use. Uh, and then we also have actions and actions are really quite powerful. You can set these up and have them, you know, uh, upload the image, save the image, copy to the clipboard, you know, open up directories and stuff like that. Uh, you, you can basically automate uh, things if you need to do that with your screenshots. Uh, and there is a plugin section and they do have an OCR module. I have not been able to get that running under Windows right now, uh, but they are at least thinking about that as, uh, you know, expansion for the future for this program. So we'll just go ahead and uh, click OK on that. And so that's kind of some of the options. Uh, however, there's one other really important feature that I would like to show you, uh, and that is the ability to open existing images. Uh, so let's say that, you know, I came over here, I, I've already saved this off, uh, but, you know, I forgot to mark it up. Let's say maybe I closed it or whatever, and now it's gone. Uh, well, I can actually just open it back up and go ahead and start marking it up again. Or maybe I've downloaded an image from a website. It's not even a screen capture, uh, but I can use that too. And in fact, let's go under File, and I'm going to go under Open. Uh, and if I uh, come over here to, uh, let's just go into Pictures. Uh, and here is a, a picture of a campus, and I will open that up. And of course, we get, uh, we get little scroll bars here if we, we can't see the whole image in our window. Uh, and I can come in here and use the exact same tool. So, oh, you need to go over here to your first class and here's to your second class and here's where your third class is located. And, you know, I can add arrows and do whatever else I want to do on that. So, again, you can just open up any picture that you like. So, not super groundbreaking features. However, between the tabs and the ability to open... Uh, files or pictures that you know you've uh, maybe edited in the past forgot to do something to or again or just nothing to do with the screenshot at all are all super handy also the ability to add your own kind of custom icons i find super useful because sometimes i need to communicate certain things uh, and i can just add my own own icons in order to do that so that is the basics of CaseNip. It's my absolute favorite uh, program. Again, it's replaced something that I've been paying for for well over a decade. Uh, and that's just how powerful it is. It basically runs under any system, Windows and Linux, uh, that I use. So that's it. And I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you really, really like my content, you can hit the subscribe button. And I will talk to you all later on. Oops, in the edit, I just noticed that I forgot to tell you about that other website. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to open up uh, my web browser, and we are going to go to 
svgrepo.com. Again, the link will be in the description. And this is the uh, site that I really like to get SVGs for, for KSNP because it really kind of specializes in icons, which are typically perfect for this sort of thing. And you can come up here, you can find whatever you want to. So, you know, if I want to look for an airplane or something like that, I can uh, go down here and look at all the different icons. Uh, you can use these uh, little buttons up here in order to sort. So if I want something that's, uh, you know, colored or black and white or outlined or filled or whatever, uh, typically almost everything here is all free. And you just come over here and you click on the download button and download the SVG and just load it into KSNP as I demonstrated earlier. Well, that's it for the bonus. And so uh, I certainly appreciate you uh, watching this little extra section and I will talk to you all later.